Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, with your hosts, Mark, Bob, and Wayne. This week, the activity of camping. But this leads us to the, the, the grand finale of the river, trial number three. The log. <laughs> the log. This is a common occurrence. So we had one guy in the front who sort of knew what he was doing, and the rest of us were following. And he would pick out the route, right? Sometimes in the in the parts where you could float, there would be like obstacles. It'd be like a rock or get narrow or whatever. And the whole time he's like rock, log, and he's pointing things out and we're all going around it. At some point, there's this blind turn and we see him disappear around the turn ahead of us. And he just calls out from the distance like log. And we're like, okay, there's a log somewhere. Mm. And uh, the other guy in the kayak at this, or the other one of the other guys in the kayak at this point is like, cool, I got this, and goes speeding around this corner and just fucking nails the log perfectly. Oh. Like, not like he nicked it and it tipped him over. He dug the nose of his kayak into the log. The back swung around and he blocked the whole river. Damn. And he fell out. So he was like, floating kind of away. He couldn't move his kayak. A canoe and a kayak are coming around this blind corner to a fully blocked off river. Everyone went in the water except for the douchebag in the front who looked so smug about the whole thing. But as you recall, two of us normie idiots had our lunches packed in brown paper bags. <laughs> Let me tell you what else is not waterproof. A cheap Ziploc bag that you put your sandwich in and didn't seal very carefully because you didn't think you'd be needing to keep river water out. Oh, no. uh, a cheap water bottle that doesn't really seal very well and you'll have to keep upright or it leaks out and or river water leaks into it. None of my food was waterproof at this point. Yeah, so I ate a soggy sandwich for lunch. <laughs> I didn't eat the chips. They didn't fare very well. But the log stole my food and I'm still pretty upset about it. We got to where our car was parked at about 8 p.m., Mm -hmm. I want to say almost 12 whole hours of kayaking. Literally, my entire hands were blisters. Everything hurt. I hated everything. The douchebags who knew how to kayak were like, yeah, that was pretty good. But like, I thought I was going to die. Uh -huh. But then we get to the end of the river and we have to camp. And as it turns out, the campsite we booked is an axe murderer's fucking murder valley. <laughs> <laughs> what? So we're in northern Ohio, right? So we, we turn all our shit in. We're like, okay, we just got to go set up camp. It's already dark because the kayak trip took way longer than we thought. From the kayak place, we drove into the deepest valley and it was so dark. Like it was dark out, but when you drive down into a valley that's got trees and stuff in it, it gets darker, right? There's no sunlight coming yeah. in. It gets darker and darker as you go down. It was one of those valleys where it's just like filled with mist. It wasn't really foggy out, out on the surface. But as we descended to where we were camping, it was like driving into a bowl of fog. Couldn't see maybe 20 feet in front of the car, driving deeper, can't see maybe 10 feet in front of the car. We find the campsite by parking the car, getting out with our phone flashlights or whatever, and like kicking the dirt around until we find a fire pit. We're like, okay, this must be a campsite. We aim the car headlights towards the fire pit. If you know how light works in fogs, you can't see shit. Like you just, all you see is fog in front of your face everywhere. And it felt, it honestly felt like we were in a horror movie in the place where the ax murderer lives in a cabin in the woods and waits for unsuspecting teens to come camp. It was with the, with the fog swirling, with everyone having flashlights and trying to do stuff, shadows were whipping everywhere. And of course we couldn't fit everything in one car. So we had to do two trips, oh, right? No. I don't know how we drove all, we all drove up in one car from, from home. But we had to like take ferry a couple of us over. I guess it was people drying stuff off and trying to get ready. So me and one other of the Eagle Scout boys were like the first team to get driven over. The car dropped us off and we started working. And then the car guy was like, all right, I'm gonna go pick up the other two dudes. And it was just me and Eagle Scout boy with handheld flashlights in the misty darkness of a valley at like 9 p.m. 9 30 p.m. we're trying to assemble a tent we're trying to get some kind of fire going the fire makes it worse fire like dances and it makes the shadows flicker all around it felt like we were the two of us were alone there for like hours we we're probably alone for like 20 minutes when they went to get you know pick up our other friends and we were literally having panic attacks at some point we stopped doing anything to get the camp ready and stood back to back with our flashlights just looking out into the mist like, Hello? Hello? 
We're boys, so don't kill us. <laughs> it's not fun to kill teenage boys. <laughs> the best thing you can do when there's no visibility is make a loud noise to announce where you are. Well, the axe murderer can see in the fog. Everybody knows that. That's what you'd know. If you can go into a foggy area and all your friends are like, man, it's foggy, and you can see everything, you know what you're going to do. It's like a career <laughs> test. Yeah, the career fair. There's just a foggy corner. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a whole tent at the career fair foggy room with like letters on the wall there's a person asleep and you, you see if you sneak into their dreams there's a there's a bunch of tvs and you see if you can come out of them yeah, yeah. they're all playing static but if you could speak through one and go out another you know one loner kid walks into the tv room and all the tvs just like <laughs> become faces and they start talking and the people at the career fair are like <laughs> we know this is why we do what we do you know you know what little girl your job is chosen your destiny is fulfilled the salary is minimum wage <laughs> you can't do anything I hate a career day too but I don't remember it being this fucking terrifying that's because you couldn't see in the fog yeah sorry you're you're just, right. you just weren't fit for, you're more yeah. of a fire watcher type yeah, you're not wrong. So that's pretty much it. And like our friends come back, we we cook some hot dogs over the fire and hang out. Once all five of us are there, it feels like you know even if something happened, we could all take them. The Eagle Scouts have got some you know knives or whatever pocket knife sort of things. <laughs> we're fine. We're safe. And uh, and we yeah. sleep in the tents. And like that's one of the most exhausted nights of sleep I've ever had. Because camping, you're not comfortable. It's not a bed, right? It's like a, it's like an inflatable pad and a sleeping bag. I laid down and my whole body was just like. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> oh, and then I fell right asleep and like everything just hurt and I just I slept so hard. But um but yeah, I we were fine. We woke up, we went home the next morning. That trip describing it and even hearing myself tell it back, it sounds miserable, right? Like it sounds kind of terrible for me. I love it. I fucking love that I have that experience. Me and those four other dudes share this crazy ass experience that all these nonsense things happen and we had all these problems and that i feel like i will literally remember for the rest of my life and remember those guys i love stories like that where everything is just like w while it's happening it's just shit, just garbage everything goes wrong but you get to the end of it and you're just like man we did we shared that we did that together we survived man like our tour we survived man it's terrible <laughs> yeah. garbage yeah but man yeah. we did it every minute of that <laughs> Yeah, man. I've had days like that. But on a, on a different note, I thought that story was going to end with you being like, and that day I was killed by an axe murderer. <laughs> My ghost has haunted ever since. You thought the ending of the story, Bob is alive here telling us today, was going to end in his death. No, that's the crazy part. He's He's been dead all along. Anyway, sorry. But yeah, the, the hard days are the most rewarding. Nope, I still hate all the ones I've lived through.